left or the right, the arc will move in straight down the centre line and turn the body as you move in. Somebody's got hold of his side on like this, it's dead simple. You've got, to be, you've got to be like water and find a weak point. And again, this only comes through practice. It's not something you can learn from a DVD. You learn the principle. Okay, so listen to what I'm saying. As he's grabbed you there, start to move around it and go straight for the head. There's that same old palmy old strike again. So again, I'm moving into a head control. If he comes this side, it doesn't matter. I'll go for a head control here. You'll notice how I've got fingers in his eyes and his snotty nose. And I rip the head back. I don't even hold the arm this time. He's just dropped on my knee. Okay? And he's smashing his head into the ground again. Again, nothing fancy here. It's not Aikido, it's not judo. It's pretty obvious. And it doesn't matter how someone grabs me, I move in and I grab the head. I'm just gonna reach for the head, reach for the head, reach for the eye socket. Go for all those soft targets I talked about earlier on. Control it. There we go. It's easy. No fancy footwork even. It's simple body mechanics, and I finish with that again. SOP, standard operational procedure. Okay, uh, when training, as well as using individuals, as you've seen earlier on, uh, for your striking techniques, it's probably best you know, to save your partner's uh, damage and embarrassment that you start to use equipment for training. Uh, and you can do no better than start using tie pads. These are widely available now in virtually all martial arts shops and any good martial arts magazine. Just make sure that you get the good leather ones that actually do come from Thailand. They last a lot longer, uh, they're much tougher, more resilient to train with. Um, to use pads, you have to know how to hold them. This may sound like a ridiculous thing to say, but in fact, if you know how to hold the pads correctly, yeah, you'll save your partner getting injured and you'll actually get more out of it. Um, I'm going to use Richard again. You can see what he's going to do. He's going to slip his hand up the pad, like so, and make sure that these Velcro fastenings are tight. Not, new, not too tight just to cut off the circulation. Um, for the moment, we're going to actually just use the one pad. Um, we're going to use it for the, 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 ver the various techniques that we've been using today. Uh, the palm heel strikes, the slaps, the elbow strikes, the knees, and even the kicks. So if we're looking at the way Richard stands at the moment, he's holding the pad in a good strong position. And remember, the way you train is the way you react. So we've got to think of this pad as if it's an opponent's head. Okay? It's not just some blue pad that some guy in the gym is holding. This is actually, you treat it as the enemy. Okay? And we work from our line up, as we've done all of this DVD, and we stand like so. Okay? Your partner then, to replicate the whole thing, moves towards me, like so. That's your signal, if you like, your trigger to strike the pad. Okay? So if we just go through that again, we take the line up, he walks forward, and bang, and I hit him. All my attention is focused on the pad. Okay, I treat this as real. That's for the, the forward palm heel strike. So again, this time it's speed. It's here, bang, and you hit it. We can also use, obviously, the swinging palm heel strike that we used earlier, like a hook. Okay? Again, you're standing in position here. Your partner moves towards you. Now the head's close enough to strike. Rotate the hip and strike with the heel of the palm. Repeating this over and over and over again, we build speed, we build power, and we build balance and coordination. Okay, because that's what you need for this to work. Remember, it's important that you look at the target when you strike it. Other ways we can train with this, obviously we can hold the pad in position like so, and we can drive the pad man back. So if you stand closer, Richard, we can actually drive the pad man back with multiple strikes, as we demonstrated, you know, earlier on in the DVD. Drive them forward and into the target, vitally important. So that's the palm, the heel palm strikes, okay? We can also obviously use this against elbow strikes. We used earlier on the technique where we stepped inside the opponent and struck them with a side elbow. We can replicate this thing because now what Richard can do, Richard can actually strike me with a pad, like so. So I practice this technique as it's meant to be done. So again, I step inside. Richard then pulls the pad back to a central position, and you can practice with the elbow. Constantly repeat this technique over and over and over again. It yeah, makes for a good, powerful elbow strike. And of course, builds your reflexes when dealing with a real situation. So that's one other way in which you can use the tie pads to work elbows. If you're using both pads, you 
you can then build up strength in your left and your right arm. Personally, I think you should stick with what you know. So if, you can, if you're right-handed, then you're going to use your right hand. If you're left-handed, then you're going to use your left hand. Basically, everything comes from that basic stance, whether you're left or right-handed. Yeah? But sometimes it's good to learn and train to strike with both hands. Again, I'm using open hand strikes here. And it will be the same for the hooks, like so. One, two. You'll see how Richard's moving the pads upwards and downwards, and keeping them out of the way. But always keeping the pad on the center line where the opponent's head might be. Okay? Like so. Multiple elbow strikes can also be done. Great for building stamina. But actually, a fight doesn't last longer than 30 seconds, so you don't actually need that much stamina for a good all out street fight. Um, the SAS are renowned for their stamina, um, so that never never was in question. Also, I'm careful when we're working with the pads like so. Yeah, we, uh, We've used elbow strikes side on like this, and side on like this, but we also made mention earlier on of when someone possibly grabs you this way and we drive the elbow up. Okay? So when he grabs me here, he moves in, and I lift the, the pads in. We lift the elbow up like so. So again, from there, he moves in. Elbow strike up, elbow strike down, down onto the target again. The pad. Um, working with knees and head controls, you can also do that with the pads. Except you see here, Richard's got the pads across his abdomen, protecting his body, his lower body here, and my target pad, the pad that I'm going to hit, is placed across the top. Pads are in position here. All I'm going to do here is control his head, as I would do from some of the exercise we did earlier, and then drive that knee up and in to the pads. And in order to get a really powerful knee, okay, you'll see that what I'm doing is I'm coming up on the toes and driving the hip forward and in. This gives you a maximum driving power, maximum power, into the pad to finish the opponent off. With regards to actual scenarios, I mean, you can build a whole scenario up here. If Richard, say, for example, comes towards me, he attacks me with a hook, so he swings in. I move in and strike with this elbow. I then hit him again with this elbow. I catch his head, pull him down from the head controls we learned earlier, and then drive a double knee into his body. And we can even do the takedowns and the head controls when we're working with a pad. So again, Richard swings in. I move in. I strike him here. I grab him, turn him. There's my head control. Then I drive a knee in. Then I do a face rip and a take down here. Bom, 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 and strike Richard. So you can see how you can build these scenarios up. And that's what you should do. You should think of every possible situation that you could end up in. And if you can practice them in an environment where you've got a bar, yeah, you're getting in or out of a car, which we're going to look at, um, that's even better. Obviously, we're doing it in the cold light of a, of a, of a training area, yeah? But you understand the point I'm, I'm actually making here. Um, so finally, last and not least, uh, we did talk about kicks. And kicks are something you can practice. I personally would never use a kick in a street fight, but I know some of you guys out there have been training martial arts a long time, so you don't want to make use of kicks. If you're going to make use of any kick at all, there are only two that you're going to ever use. And that would be a stamping kick to the body, yeah? like so. And this is used, for example, when someone's rushing towards you and you drive the kick in. It's pretty straightforward. The target area would be the bladder, which I have mentioned earlier when we use the knee. And you would lift and drive it in like so. Okay? If you're right-legged, you'd use your right leg. If you're left-legged, you'd use your left leg. The low kicks, like side leg kicks to the joints here, which you would only use as a secondary weapon anywhere, yeah, it can be used against the pads here. You can see Richard's going to hold the pad. I'm going to say don't hold the pad like that. For obvious reasons, you can damage the joint. So the best way to use this pad is therefore like that. And again, we're going to kick with the shin, as I mentioned earlier, and cut that across the thigh. Stepping across the pad and then kicking in with the shin. Driving the leg across the body. Again, it's a secondary weapon. It's not something I would... Uh, actually ever use, personally. I'd be happy to take them down with a palm middle strike and elbow and knee. And of course a head control does so much more damage. So that's one way in which we can use the pads. We can also use the pads for conditioning to toughen up the body. So for example, if I'm, if I'm standing like this, Richard can toughen my midsection up by swinging the pad across. 
like this, and again, like so. Make sure you breathe out when you do this, obviously. Okay? It's, it's good to get used to being hit, believe it or not, because that's what's probably going to happen in a street fight. If you're slightly switched off, you're going to take one shot, and then you have to move in. We discussed that earlier on. So get used to being struck around the body. I mean, I've seen Thai boxers who I work with, yeah, they'll toughen the shins by having the leg lift up, like so. They'll toughen the thighs by standing like so. And their partner relentlessly bangs away at the joint of the, uh, the thigh here. Again, hold the pad like this, straight into the body. And of course, finding the face, <laughs> which I'm not going to do actually, that's just a joke. Um, so this is how we can use the pads, a variety of different ways to make the training effective. You must learn to hit the pads correctly. You can't just train in these techniques in isolation. You need to hit equipment. If you've got bags, use the bags instead. Okay, I think that makes that clear. Okay, what we do need to do uh, in order to make your, your, your self-protection effective, yeah? And it's a way all of us guys in the SAS used to do it. We used to use triggers, or what they call anchors, okay? It's basically something that uh, happens to you that associates with a specific state of mind. So for example, I mean, a, a, an example of an anchor would be, you're in a bad mood, you hear some good music on the radio, suddenly your state changes, you feel good about things. In this situation, we want to turn on the aggression. So we train in this way, so that when we're struck or movement towards us happens, that is an anchor, a trigger for me to actually attack the opponent. I can actually use a physical trigger as well. And we've seen this earlier on in the lineup. I was standing in this position, Richard moved into the area here, and he touched me here. You can train for this, so that when you feel that touch, bang, you strike the pad in this case. Okay? So Richard moves forward, touches my hand with the pad, like so, and that is the trigger that allows me to go. It's what we call anchors or triggers. Okay? So what you do is you build the state of aggression. You think, this is the worst motherfucker that I've ever seen. I'm going to rip his head off. You think back to a time when you maybe were in that state yourself, when you felt aggression towards someone or something and did nothing about it. This time you're going to utilize it, you're going to use it. You remember what happened at that time. See what you saw, hear what you heard, and feel what you felt and go through the emotions, yeah? And at that point there, you nod at your partner, he moves forward, touches your hand with a pad. That's the trigger. That's the guy moving into your space. And then you release the technique. So what we're now doing is tying up the physical training, boom, with a psychological change that's required for you to be aggressive in a fighting situation. So just remember that, it's a simple little rule. Think back to a time when you were aggressive and you did something, okay? See what you saw, hear what you heard, feel what you felt at that time, so relive it in your mind's eye. Then get your partner to fire off the trigger, nod your head, they'll know, they'll touch your hand, release the weapon and hit the target. And that way, when it happens for real, your unconscious has learned a really powerful technique. It's far more powerful, actually, than learning the actual strike itself. That's easy. So spend a lot of time on these basic visualization and kinesthetic techniques. See what you saw, hear what you heard, feel what you felt at that time, and then go for it.